sunlight either as a key light or as a backlight. If you use the sunlight as a backlight, you can use a reflector to fill in shadows by bouncing light onto the opposite side of your subject. Here's a shot without the reflector and with it. If your reflector is not providing enough fill, you can use your own lighting for key light. However, sunlight is bluish and tungsten or incandescent lights will appear orangish by comparison. If you use sunlight as your key light and your added lights are for fill or backlight, you can white balance to the sunlight and your lights will appear kind of orange or reddish. Or you can white balance your camera to your lights, like the standard 3200 Kelvin tungsten lights we use. Then sunlight coming in through a window will appear bluish, which can look great if you're using the sunlight as a backlight. Usually, you'll want to white balance to whatever light source is acting as the key light. If you don't want this mixture of light colors between sunlight and your own lights, you can gel your tungsten lights with a pale blue gel called a CTB gel. CTB stands for color temperature blue. With these gels, your lights will match the sunlight's color temperature. As with all elements of DV cinematography, lighting should always be motivated by your story. That is, there's no reason to create an intensely dramatic lighting scheme for video teaching, day trading. Although a lot of former day traders might argue that point. Always light to support your message. You'll light the same scene very differently depending on whether you're doing a serious financial services video, a film noir detective movie, or a comedic training video. Sometimes, You'll want to shoot your talent in front of a green screen or blue screen, so in post-production you can replace the green areas of the image with a different background using a technique called chroma keying. The particular shades of green and blue are used because they're not present in flesh tones. I use green screens because they work a little better with the DV format because of the way color is sampled. You can buy a giant roll of green backdrop paper from a photo supply store, paint a wall of your studio or garage green, or get a portable green screen background that folds up for easy transport. Also, you might want to find out if there's a green screen set in your area that's available for a reasonable rental price. It sounds easy, but green screens need to be lit and shot perfectly or they won't completely key out in post. It requires some experimentation to find exactly the lighting and chroma key settings that'll work the best. To light a green screen or blue screen, first go over the following checklist. First, make sure all your lights are exactly the same color temperature. Don't use diffusion filters on your camcorder. Make sure your subject is not wearing or holding anything even close to the background color. Remember that hair, small, thin, or semi-transparent objects will be more difficult to key out. Also, you'll want to position your subject as far away from the green screen as possible to keep the lights lighting your green screen from bouncing off onto the edges of your subject. Then, follow this formula. First, light the green screen as evenly as you can to your eye. The object is to light evenly, but not too brightly. If you light the green screen too brightly, light will bounce off the screen onto the edges of your subject, make it a lot harder to key out. A couple of Lowell Total Lights bounced off umbrellas, one on each side at about a 45 degree angle to spread broad, even light over the whole background works really well. Fluorescent fixtures also work well for green screen. Then, turn on the zebra function on your camcorder, then slowly increase the exposure. On one single click of the exposure knob, the entire green screen background should be zebraed. Then click back the other way, and all the zebras should go away. If this is true, your screen is lit evenly. If part of your screen is zebraed and the rest isn't, this area is too bright, so try repositioning your lights for more even lighting and try again. Now even if it takes two or three clicks for your zebra to go away, your green screen might still key out cleanly. A few tests with your software will tell you for sure. Now set your exposure at least two stops below the point at which the green screen was zebraed. That is, if the green screen went all zebra at f2, you want to set your exposure at f4. A rim light is really important for green screen shots to remove any hint of green around the edges of your subject and to make them stand out from whatever background your devious mind cooks up for this shot. You may need to use two backlights, one on each side. 
Set a backlight as low as you can without being in the shot to make a nice white rim all the way around your subject. You can also gel backlights with warm colors like orange or amber, but never blue or green. Okay, you're all set. If it's really important that you're able to pull a clean key, connect a laptop to your camera, capture a few seconds with the subject performing the action as they will in the shot, then experiment with keying it out. For an important project, this is the best time to find out if you'll be able to get a clean key. You can shoot green screen shots outside with a large collapsible green screen. Position the sun, I mean the subject and screen, so that the sun is behind and off to the side, rimlining your subject a la the dvcreators.net amazing secret outdoor lighting technique. Let the ambient light cover the screen evenly. This way, you don't have any shadows on the screen. In a black limbo set, you shoot your subject in front of a solid colored black background so your subject appears to be floating in blackness. First, position the subject as far in front of the background as possible. Then, light the subject brightly and avoid all spill on the background by using flags and very directional key and fill. The brighter your subject is lit, the more you can decrease your exposure so the background will go darker and darker gray and finally black. In some locations, you might have to forget that big, beautiful soft light because there's just too much spill and go with the diffusion gel and barn doors instead to tightly control light spread. A two to one fill should be used so shadows don't get too dark and merge into the background. Then use your setup level or black balance control on your camcorder to crush the black so the entire background goes completely pure black. A nice backlight to rim your subject is a nice touch. Obviously you want your subject wearing light clothes or crushing the blacks might make areas of their clothing black. In a white limbo set, you shoot your subject in front of a pure white paper roll, white wall, or white psych, so your subject appears to be floating in a white universe. This is a little more complicated and a little bit the opposite of lighting for black limbo. You want to light the white background evenly and brightly so it just almost clips. Here are the steps. First, light the white background as evenly as you can to your eye. Then, turn on the zebra function on your camcorder and slowly increase exposure. Ideally, on one click of the exposure knob, the entire background should go completely zebra. Then, click back the other way and all zebra should go away. If part of the background is zebra and part of it is not, reposition your lights to try to get the lighting more even. Then, leave your exposure set on the click with the full zebra stripes over the whole background, just one click away from no zebra. Now, you'll need to light your subject without changing the exposure on your camcorder. First, turn on the key light and move it closer until you see the first hint of zebra on your subject then back it away until the zebra disappears. You can use a blue, amber, or orange gelled backlight for a little shine on the subject's hair and shoulders, but never a white backlight since lighting the edges of your subject white will have the effect of merging them into the background. Once you've followed the white limbo lighting procedure, if you've been successful at having the zebra pattern on the entire background and none on the subject, you'll find that amazingly most professional software will smoothly key out the pure white background with a Luma key filter, which will make any area of the frame over a certain brightness level disappear and reveal the video layer below. The dvcreators.net amazing secret outdoor lighting formula technique covered earlier can also be used with one of your own lights substituting for the sun. Simply position a very bright light source behind and off to the side of your subject and use a reflector to fill the front of your subject. Position the bounce on the opposite side of the light and try high and low angles. You may need a silver or gold reflector to reflect enough light. With this tip, you can get incredibly beautiful results with just a single light and a piece of white foam core. What an easy setup! Who said lighting had to be complicated? What is motivated lighting? When lighting your set, look at each scene and think, 
Where would the light normally be coming from in this place, and what would it look like? Places you would normally associate with bringing light into a scene like doorways, windows, and hallways. These are first choices for where the key light should be coming from. A light that appears in a shot, like a table or floor lamp, ceiling light, or street light, is called a practical. When lighting a scene that has apparent light sources in it, you want to place your light so the light direction, quality, and color appears to be coming from the practical. This technique is another example of motivated lighting. Here's an example of a desk lamp in a scene. Notice how strange it looks when lit from the wrong side, and how much more natural it looks to light the scene from the lamp side. Here's a scene where a single pro light is simulating moonlight coming from outside. In a romantic setting, the light might be coming from a candle or warm lamp on the table, so you'd place a soft key light on the same side as the practical and gel it with an orange or amber gel. When your talent turns off a practical on set, a common technique is to switch off your lighting simultaneously, and if it's a nighttime scene, also turn on a blue light at the same time. Remember that you white balance before putting colored gels on your lights or turning on lights with colored gels. Another example of motivated lighting is placing a blue gelled light behind a TV or computer screen so the light simulates the light of the screen and casts a blue glow over the people watching it. Here are some tips for lighting a large area with only a few lights. The first thing you'll probably want to do is bring up the overall light level in the room. One thing to try first, just because it's easy, is to turn on the existing lighting and just see how it looks. In a place with white walls, you can bounce a total light or work light against the walls to bathe the entire scene in a minimum amount of light before placing your other lights. The TOTA is called a broad light and does a good job at blasting a nice, even light over a wide area. If there are no white walls, try bouncing light off the ceiling. Remember that there's no law that you must light large areas evenly. Think how nice it looks to watch someone walking through a forest with dappled areas of light and shade. If there's an area or object in the scene to which you want the viewer's eye attracted, highlight it with a special dedicated light called an accent light. If the area or item is small, you can poke a hole in some black wrap and place it in front of a small light, making sure not to restrict the light's airflow. Aim the light at the object, and you'll have a nice little soft spot of extra illumination. Accent lights can light up a wine bottle or secret immortality formula, highlight part of a newspaper headline, or put a dramatic, sensuous accent on a woman's eyes in a close-up or extreme close-up. One big secret for literally putting atmosphere into your shot is to pick up a fog machine at a DJ supply store or catalog to make a huge impact in dramatic interior shots. The farther away an object is, the more fog is between it and the camera, meaning that distant objects are more indistinct leading to more of a shallow depth of field effect. This technique is not for every project, but for DV filmmakers or people shooting commercials or marketing projects that need a film-like atmosphere, this does qualify as a big secret. Lights are dangerous things, hot, electrical, fragile, so treat them with respect. Always use a pair of thick gardener's gloves when adjusting barn doors, adding gels, or aiming hot lights. Never put your lights close to curtains, paper, or anything else that might catch on fire when hot. Always keep a fire extinguisher handy. It's a good idea to announce that you're about to turn on a light. Light on. So no one's looking directly at it when it lights up. Also, put sandbags on the legs of any stands that might tip over due to being higher than normal or holding a large fixture like a softbox. When replacing lamps and professional fixtures, never touch the bulbs with your fingers. Your natural finger oils will make the lamps explode when they heat up. Always use the foam holder provided or a lint-free cloth to hold the lamp. Be careful not to bump lights. The filament can be damaged, causing the lamp to pop after it's turned on. The shoot is going great, till suddenly, in the middle of your talent's best take of the whole shoot, the set goes completely dark. Circuit breaker! 
This is a situation to be avoided. The formula is amps equals watts divided by volts. With a 100 to 120 volt power supply like in the US, an easy rule is just to add up the total wattage of your lights and divide by 100. This number should be half the amperage rating of the circuit breaker or less. So if you're using two total lights at 500 watts each, a Reefa at 500, a 350 watt Omni and a 150 watt ProLite, that's 2000 watts, which is about 20 amps. Since most circuit breakers are set to pop at 15 or 20 amps, this is way too much wattage to put on one circuit. In this case, you'll want to split the load up to at least three circuits to give yourself plenty of safety margin. You can plug some of the lamps into a long, thick, heavy-duty industrial strength extension cord and run it down the hall to another room that your positive is on a separate circuit. Gaffer's tape is the lighting designer's best friend. It looks like duct tape, but doesn't leave sticky residue. Always tape light cords and extension cables down. So here's some ideas on learning more about great lighting. First, be aware of beautiful lighting that happens naturally. When you notice a great lighting moment, look around and see where the light's coming from, what kind of light it is, and why it looks so good. If it just happened all by itself, maybe it can't be all that hard to duplicate later with a little work. Also, study great oil paintings. Some paintings are amazing studies in light and shadow using hard light, soft light, key, fill, backlight, and background light, and just the composition and framing are a source of endless inspiration. Great photographs are the same thing. Photographers, more than DPs or videographers, try to always look for and capture beautiful natural lighting. Look through photo magazines or books or cruise the web. The great thing about studying lighting and paintings and photos is that they hold still while you study them, making it easier to break down the lighting and analyze just what arrangement of lights were used. Also, watch films and television. Consider what kind of lighting they're choosing for each scene and how it's supporting the message. And think about how you would have lit that scene. But the best way is to experiment yourself. Take a few hours and set up lighting to copy a favorite scene from a movie, a striking painting, or a TV commercial. Well, thanks for watching. I hope the information in this DV Enlightenment course makes a big impact in the quality of your very next project. If you have any questions, visit our forums at dvcreators.net. And while you're there, check out the other titles in the DV Cinematography series, our other products and workshops, and tons of other resources. Well, not to make light of the subject, but here's wishing that all your lighting turns out brilliant.